it's a huge pleasure that you're watching 30 Minutes with Edmond Safari. Now, how did you join Rotary first and foremost? Um, a friend of mine five years ago invited me to join. He told me then he always wanted to be a Rotarian. There was a Rotary club being set up in Nadia. And then he asked me, why don't you come and you can check it out? So we went there, so people, I didn't know them. I'd always wanted to serve, but I also wanted to meet people. You, you start this journey of taking our call. Yes. Take me through that experience. Where it started from? Why? Why? I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be like my friends. Mm. My friends were, were happening people. They seemed to be the happy guys, the money guys, the well-dressed guys, the everything guys. What is the secret that Afrigo has or that you ingrained in your music production? Uh, Safari today you can become a singer. Today? Through, yeah, through this technology of today, mm. modern technology. Mm. You can go to the studio, a producer, he can produce you. You release your maybe um, one song. But when you go to the, to the stage to play live, sometimes you cannot manage. That is true. Because you've been manufactured through the studio. Yes. Mr. Patrick, you have been a football professional for over 20 years. Yes. Where does the story start from? Well, my story starts from uh, when I was eight years old. I uh, started a club called Schellingwoude. It's a small club in Amsterdam. And in the same year, uh, Ajax came to me and said, uh, do you want to play for, for the youth uh, team uh, from Ajax? And, and from that uh, moment, uh, I played 13 years in the youth uh, academy of Ajax. Uh, the moment you were arrested uh, and you were away from your family, reflecting today, what went into your mind? Oh, it is very traumatizing. Of course, the way we were arrested, of course, it looked like an abduction. You can't call it an arrest. I mean, an arrest is a lawful exercise, which authorized officers carry out. They, they identify themselves. They tell you about the crime you've committed. And all this. I was simply whisked away from a restaurant and blindfolded, thrown into, you know, a vehicle, and people sit over you, and they punch you, and they do all these things. So it was extremely traumatizing. Corruption is affecting Uganda greatly. Um, according to my research, Uganda loses a, a lot of money annually because of corruption as an epidemic. So I decided to pursue this problem because I felt that in order for it to go away, we need to inform the youth who are going to be the leaders of tomorrow and are going to have the ability to eradicate and make sure this problem goes away in the far future. Imran is undertaking a special project in spreading the message of anti-corruption to the young people. He is actually telling us that we need to take this message not to the older generation but to the young one. And he possibly has a good reason. The question is, are you listening? Will you listen to him? But more importantly, will you also take action? against what he's trying to do. Until we meet again, your coach, Edmond Safari.